Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon to everybody. This is Shelby. And today I wanted to go over one of those things that everybody just gets frustrated at one point or another. And that's when your coach, trainer, teacher, even your horse goes over, what are you doing with your body position? You need to move left or right. Your body position is off. Those things, those things get us all. They've got me at one point, and I'm sure they've got most of you. So what I did is I set up a simulation here. And we're just going to go over a little bit of a stationary horse, because obviously my cameras can't move, on how I envision the horses see, basically. I think it's a lot more complex than this, but I just want to get you a different perspective and idea and how important it is to not only work when your horse left and right sides, but to know where those sides are from their point of view, just a little bit better. And also the importance of not only physically training your horses, but really getting them to understand stand things mentally and emotionally, to trust in you, to rely on you, because some of this stuff gets kind of wonky here. So I'm gonna start playing. So here I come, I'm, I'm walking it up on the, on the on side. And I'm gonna walk out, I'm about 40 feet away. Now here, I'm in both eyes of my horse. On my on side, more predominantly than the off side, but I'm still present in both sides of that horse. Now if this horse is green, this might cause a little bit of concern because if I'm a little bit threatening, I'm two times the threatening now because I'm in both sides. If uh, I'm scary or anything else, I'm two times as scary in both sides. So now I'm just going to simulate desensitizing. So I'm just moving my whip back and forth here and walking up towards my horse, which is my cameras, right? So eventually I leave, almost leave the off side and am just on the on side. Now I'm going to walk back out to that that 40 foot mark trying to stay right on the line that I walked in on and I'm going to simulate sending my horse in a counterclockwise direction so my onside eye is going to be uh, on me. Now, now I'm over here now see I'm desensitizing I'm really working the onside eye of my horse but then there's a little problem here, right here. And uh, we'll have another example of this, but, but see my stick and string is now on the off side and I'm working the on side. So my body position for where this horse is standing here looking at me is incorrect. I need to be off over here even farther. See there, right there, even though I got, well, I got really close, it really came across to that offside eye. So I'm going to walk out, back out to my 40 feet, and now I'm going to cross over, find my middle that I use for the middle, which is just slightly on the onside. And now I'm going to walk on over about the same amount of steps to the offside of my horse. And I'm going to do the same thing. We're just going to desensitize this side of the horse right so this is a lot lot this here is a lot easier this is a lot easier for the horse to understand because i'm in the middle of their vision i'm not i'm not going out of frame which i don't think i could really go out of the frame the same with a horse with like actual horse vision but anyway i'm not really going out of frame on the video here but then this happens again right there the stick is here and it's over here and here's the string I'm on the on side. So again, where I'm coming at towards my horse, because my nose, the nose of my horse is going to be looking right down the middle. I need to be way over here, probably off the screen, like off the screen completely, so that I get this only on my off side to work that off side. This is why I'm talking about with a green horse's with our green horse is this back here, right in here, right? Oops, right 
right here, where I'm not only on this side, but I'm on this side as well, that's potential to cause a green horse that doesn't really understand to either go backwards, to push through, to panic. It, it's going to cause something to happen because it's not consistent and it's not really just on one side because that horse isn't ready or doesn't understand about the switching sides. Now, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying that remember with a, with a horse that's never experienced this stuff, this is the kind of thing that they're going through. So now I'm going to bring out Jazz. She's going to represent obstacles. My camera blew over, so that's why that one kind of went wonky, but uh, it was really windy today. But I put it back up as close as I could. So now I'm going to use Jazz here. She looks really wonky there, but that's all right. Jazz is now an obstacle because I can't move the camera. So we're going to use Jazz and pretend that she's tarps and barrels and man-made obstacles and puddles and what have you. So now I walk up and now I'm coming in on the offside and my horse is on the onside. So I can be an obstacle too, technically, even though I'm the one supposed to be telling the horse where to go. So if it's a green horse that doesn't really understand, it has to transfer me from this eye to go over and go and do whatever I need to do over here. Maybe go uh, buy a tarp or buy a barrel or buy some scary object. So they have to mentally transfer from eye to eye and know the difference. Now I know they look around a little bit and this is this is just an this is just for you to help you pro process what's going on. And then we have the 10 mile long jazz. So now the now they're looking at the puddle, the tarp, the bridge, whatever obstacle you have in front of them, and if it's something they're not familiar with, Look how long it's on both sides. It just got huge and they can't see what's going on in the middle. Now, I know that, you know, horses are used to seeing other horses this way probably because they were born seeing that way. They grew up with their mothers and seeing it that way. That's why I have to, can't have to emphasize that Jazz represents obstacles here, right? She doesn't represent a horse. So again, it's a little bit different angle. It's a little farther away, so it's easier. But again, Jazz kind of stretched all the way across from one eye to the other. So we're going to move around a little bit more. <laughs> See, here's another prime example, like why they have to be able to transfer from eye to eye, because Jazz got three miles long there. So I'm just moving her around. And I, oh, I change a clip here. So now... I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to work on one eye. Now, I know I bleed over in the other just a little bit, but this is on this on side over here is way more easy for that horse to understand. Let's let me walk back through on the other side. This over here is much easier for the horse to process. That's why we work on one side and then the other and then the one side and then the other side, the on side and off side. But they've still got to be able to work together. That's why it's really important to get them to understand mentally and emotionally what's expected of them because they have some big things to overcome. Because here, now the obstacle's on one side and I'm on the other side. And they have to rely on us for this big blank spot. They have to rely on us for when Jazz gets three miles long. That's why it's so important that we get them to work with us mentally and emotionally not only physically now see coming up here now I'm on both sides again right jazz is over here but I'm on I'm on both sides so if I'm standing in this place and I want to send them in a, in a circle around me it's why it's really important that not only with a verbal cue I need to use my hands or my arms or my whip to direct them if I lift this hand with the whip, if I lifted it straight up, it's going to lift straight up over here, and it's consistently going to lift straight up over here, uh, just the same as on this side. Those big cues like that, they can get more subtle over time, but that's why it's really good to have a game plan here with your cues and keep them consistent, because now we're, we have two of them. And if we do something different every time, so you think about it this way, you, you cue them for one thing four different ways technically 
they're potentially seeing it what's uh, eight different ways maybe even 16 different ways okay so here again you know I'm gonna move around here with her and leave and come out this other side then things get much easier right here things get much easier for the horse to understand because there's nothing going on over here all everything's going on on this side so she's able to focus on one side and as they progress and they get farther along we'll be they should be able to transfer from eye to eye I hope this helps you guys I hope you enjoy your day I hope you enjoy your lives I hope you enjoy your horses and I hope you enjoy the ride and by the way if this helps you out let me know in the comments and don't hesitate to like subscribe share thank you very much and enjoy your day